Well, it's the one. I think that got him. I'll hold the old short. I was just telling Ruth backstage that I, I just love her whole ensemble. Like it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's all new. You know, it's ready for a night in the town or a walk in the park. You know what I mean? This is, I, this is my chance to get dressed up. Like I get my outfits from my cons. Like I'm like, this is my Chicago. This is my yeah, Chicago. Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, this is from the Chicago collection. <laughs> Everybody, Ruth Cano! How are you all? Uh, are you ready for those two big galoopers? <laughs> Jensen and Jared? Is that their names? You know. You know, the one with the symmetrical freckles. Uh, who here is from Chicago? Who is from Chicago and the surrounding areas? Less, less people. Less people. <laughs> And who's from out of town? Yeah. So you all traveled to be here. Yeah. She said, are you having a good time? Yeah. Has it been worth it so far? Yeah. Well, I'm really glad because we've got some pentagrams and symbols burnt into the back of the hall. And so, you know, you did, it did cost you your souls to be here today. Yeah. I hope that's okay with y'all. Yeah. 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 Worth it for us, a Sunday. A Sunday with us delivers. Um, so there are still some teenagers backstage, but I don't know. Should I terrorize them again today or no? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you want to come and say hi again? You're going to come? Audrey, are you ready? <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to. Don't worry. Your chef. Don't worry. Oh, here they are, right? Okay, so let's terrorize the teenagers. Thing we're going to do. Okay, so what can I do to terrorize teenagers? What should I do? Ask them tricky questions. Can anyone think of a tricky question for a teenager? The same question I asked someone the other day, but teenagers struggle with this more than adults. Okay. So, would you rather go 24 hours without your cell phone or 24 days without human contact at all? Cell phone? Human contact is so important. Aww. Again, see, you fail to terrorize the teenagers. These teenagers are unterrorizable. Is that a word? What do you want to dance. do when you grow up? Oh. <laughs> We're not going to make you dance. You've done great, guys. Listen, thank you so much for being here and being such good sports. Everyone give them a round of applause. <laughs> Calvin and Allie. Okay. Go terrorize your sister. And Ryan with her. On your first season, season 10, by the end of the season, you were um, on more episodes than any other woman in Supernatural history. <laughs> At that point. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you what it was like coming into such a male environment as like the most prominent and long-standing, long-lasting female woman. Yeah. You, you know, thank you for your question, and I'm gonna just, um, I've not formulated an answer to this, so I'm just going to see what comes out. Um, I was so not thinking about that. I just was thinking like how lucky I was to have the job and about how I could play the character as best I could. I was just so busy with that, it didn't occur to me. And everyone was wonderful to me and I... I felt completely and utterly safe at every single moment with Jared, Jens and Misha. That being said, I, I will say that what I learned, it was probably like a year later, I read online that um, the statistics for SAG, you know our union, they keep a note of everything, and including background, but that's, it doesn't matter. Uh, including uh, every actor on screen in America that year, for every one part for a woman, there was nine parts for men. And I remember being at the convention and I ha like that weekend and looking up on the board and I was so thrilled because my face was on the board and there were 10, there was nine guys and me. And I was like, oh wow. Um, and so then it started to dawn on me 
Like, I always knew how hard it was to get a job, but then it actually the reality, like the rest of the world, we're all catching on. Wait a minute, I don't think things have been fair. And at that point, the supernatural writers and producers were catching on. And they'd even hired slightly, you know, diff people move on naturally, they had different writers. They started to write more for women. I was allowed to continue as a female character. Um, they brought more women in. And I'm so really proud to say there's one, two, three, four, five of us. Is that right? Up there? This weekend. And that, in part, there was a bit of a presumption because it's a male led show and that's, you know, everyone loves the boys. But there was a presumption that women weren't valuable. But you've all turned up, you're all sitting here today. So many of you have pictures with so many of the women. And, Thank you so much. You've been part of the progress that I think needed um, to happen. So that's my little bit of a that's my journey within this. So I didn't come in with any preconceptions, and I've just always felt like I was fortunate to work. But you know, you, you learn as you go, and you, we're much more aware now, aren't we? We're also much more aware of just what the baseline is, um, and what would be really great is if we had more and more different um, ethnicities and people with disabilities too and we you know we, we, we have that we have that and we're, we're getting there so anyway thanks for your question how was it was it, was it delightful it was, it was actually nice wow that's a change yeah weird usually the crowd gets real aggressive <laughs> ladies and gentlemen ruth connell she's a girl. Nice to see you, uh, Nibble. You're, you're carrying me home, so. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, loud and swing. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't, we, uh, why don't we go ahead and make this official? Let's do it. Good Wait, people please. of Chicago, namely the neighborhood of Rosemont, <laughs> put your hands together for Mr. Jensen Eccles and Jared Padalecki. <laughs> Give him hell, fellas. Alright, alright, alright. How we do it, Chicago? That's what I thought. What? <laughs> uh, any uh, any first timers? Welcome to the family and apologies. Uh, anybody here in Chicago? Uh, for the OG convention in 2007, that's Star Wars at all? Alright, you can blame them, everybody who just raised your hands, you can blame everybody who was here 15 years ago, um, when we, when we very first kind of started doing it. It's just somebody raised their hand up there like this. <laughs> yeah, it's still here. Yeah, uh, shameful. But before we just sit up and jabber, uh, we want to get some audience questions so we can hear what y'all have to say or ask. So, left side, strong side. Left side for them. Camera left. No. Stage yeah. left. Camera left. Camera left. 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 This way. My left. Left always points to right. I did this video, we had a guest star. We used to do this in Supernatural, but we'd be like, camera left, so just remember, hold your hand up, and left always points to the right, so you know where left is. And they're like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> what is that if you hold this one up? See, that's on the L. Ls go like that, and they point to the right. Or for them, for a uh, camera, L points to the right. I, again, I apologize, thanks guys. Why don't you just see yourself out, pal? 
I'm gonna take my friend over here. He's like, yeah, that was here. All right, so what side? Are we, did, this, did, this we, side. did we decide? Camera. So right or right side? Not for them. No, for me. Correct side. <laughs> yes, right to you. Right to me. Yes, that sounds right. Right to Adam. Uh, how are you? Great, how are you? <laughs> she paused ever so slightly, like, y'all done? You haven't seen here, I need to ask a question. We're, uh, doing great. You guys have so much going on, beautiful families, the careers, everything. What's something you haven't done yet that you want to do? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I can say. I can say, but, but it doesn't stand for him. I, what I... What I would like to do, but haven't done yet, again, he can't say this, uh, turn 40. <laughs> He's already way past that, so, uh, <laughs> you know? Uh, I'd like to turn 40 again. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, but I, we did talk earlier today, we have to do some project, Ackles and I have to do some project where we see each other and do, maybe we could do like a triple take, or the whole, like, have you done a triple take lately? Did you work in a triple take to the Every time I pass a beer. <laughs> that wasn't even that good. That wasn't. It's great what you said. It's the timing. Uh, so, if we can do one of those, if we can catch one of his triple takes on camera, I'll be happy. That's what they just did. <laughs> True words are never spoken. Something that we want to do, or that I want to do, but haven't done yet. The reboot of Supernatural. <laughs> Would y'all be up for that? Because we have an announcement to make. We'd be up for it as well. <laughs> I'm busting my ass kicked. <laughs> uh, thanks so, so much for being secretive. Thank you so much for your question. You know, I was told, uh, somebody told me backstage that out of this, out of this whole group, that, that I'm, the, I'm the most secretive one of them. And I can't tell you how much that means to me. <laughs> Nope. Oh. Is, it, is it Billy Madison? He's like, I am now dumber for having heard your <laughs> answer. That's how I feel. Well, you know, speaking of turning 40, uh, I remember when I turned 40 and somebody gave me a coffin. And I thought to myself, that's the last thing I'd be. <laughs> Welcome back, I missed you. <laughs> we, we didn't miss you. Uh, lady got hit by a train, uh, left side of the body fell off. She's all right now. <laughs> all right now. It's cool. Hi. She buckled up. episodes in one day. <laughs> Whatever the storyline is, I think it's absolutely imperative that Jens and I have a, have a strong hand, the strongest hand, in uh, what it's going to be about. Um, thank you. I'm glad you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Hi, my name is Jensen. Oh, great. <laughs> Another one. Another one. <laughs> Hi, Jensen. Hey, Jensen. How's it going? Hi, Jensen. How's it going with you? What, let me ask you this. What do people call you? as like a nickname or anything like that? Jens. Jens? Yeah. Okay. Or Jen. And I'm like, dude, that's a girl name. <laughs> such, a, such a chick name. Stop it. <laughs> Jen. Jenny. Uh, Jennifer. Yeah. What's your last name? Uh, not Ackles, Pacenti. Wait, say it again? Pacenti. <laughs> Pacenti. Pacenti. Um, so they could say JP. I say yeah. J yeah, JP. Yeah. So you're Jensen and JP. He gets JP a lot. Yeah. 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 Just had a moment. Oh, we just had a moment too. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm Jensen. People call me JP. And what? <laughs> okay. What's your question? My question is, what is your most, both of you guys' most embarrassing moments in life? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I like you more when you were JP. <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> I guess I've been on TMZ a couple times. Um, <laughs> I don't know if embarrassing is the right word, or humiliating is better, or shameful. Um, but each, each time, each time, uh, yeah, I think, you know, the, the, I, I'm, let me say also I'm grateful that phones didn't exist when I was in high school. Thank God. Hashtag Samsies. Yes. Um, because we, you know, we're all human and we all do some stuff that, there are a few take backs that I'd like. Uh, but I, I, I've learned from each one and you know, let it make me a better person, so I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Um, you know, I... I <laughs> too many to count? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? That's embarrassing. <laughs> right here, right now, knowing that there's so many I can... <laughs> I have, I'll give you. I'll give you a recent embarrassing story. How about that? Because there's, there's there's a lot to look back and be like and, and shudder at. Um, I uh, I was uh, a year ago. I was doing a show called The Boys, and, uh, and the uh, the first day that I stepped on the set was um, the the scene where. My character comes out of this like cryogenic chamber and is revealed. And, uh, Are you allowed to say that? Yeah, it's been in the teaser. We see the teaser yeah, or the trailer. Um, <clears throat> and so I uh, first day on set, walk up and I, I don't have my outfit on. My I have a robe on, and I'm like, "Hi, right, nice to meet you. Hi guys, I'm Jensen. Hi, hi, hi." Slow, slow it down a second. Let me, let me, think of, let me visualize it. You need, to get, you need a baseline for this? Isn't it? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, and, and so they're like, all right, Jensen, come on over here. You're gonna be in this uh, tank thing, and uh, you just step on in, and uh, we'll go ahead and take your rope. <laughs> and uh, and so I got in there, and the, the door opens, and there's Carl and the, and the rest of the cast and then there's this whole crew who I've never met. I just met them five minutes ago. And I step out, nothing between me and them but a sock. And that was uh funny they were all looking at me like that too. Uh, who were you pointing at? Then, Wait, what are you talking about? Is the sock on your nose? What's that? It's like, is the sock on your nose? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not polite to point, Jensen. Uh -oh. There 
was a point. Um, <laughs> I had a flurry, and there was, hang on, hang on now, hang on, and wait, Sue doesn't have his points to say, hang on, but well, <laughs> so, shock another one up for embarrassing moments, but chalk it up. Anyway, uh, we can move on. Yes. <laughs> now, this is the most embarrassing moment. Uh, thank you, Jensen and JB. Yeah. Hi there. Hi. Uh, my name is Veronica. So... What's your last name? Just kidding. <laughs> Do you want to know my last name? <laughs> so, no, sure. Free bow. <laughs> okay, so... What's your address? Where do you keep your valuables? Okay, so in the show, uh, Dean is afraid of leprechauns, and uh, Sam, you're afraid of cats. In my clowns. life, clowns. Clowns. Well, yeah, clowns with cats too. Um, Sam doesn't like cats. I think he was yellow fever. Yeah. But you could be right, I'm not sure. And I just want to say, like if a leprechaun walked in here right now, who wouldn't be afraid of that? <laughs> not just Dean, you know? I think that's a universal fear. <laughs> and, I, and in my mind, I'm only seeing the horror movie version of I'm not seeing the Lucky Charms. Yeah. I've seen the horror, like, Chucky version of leprechaun. Sorry. Um, uh, yes, we, we, there are fears, great fears. So, in real life, what are your fears? Ah, bears. <laughs> I mean, I would like run from them, but I don't have any desire. If a bear walked into here, I think I'd be more scared than if a leprechaun walked in here. Not true. Oh, it's a leprechaun. Oh, it's a bear. <laughs> yeah, but then, then it, it attacks you. No, I'm, I'm hell and gone. Once a bear walks in. I don't, I'm not just the bear. Did I'm you see the video boy. that's on the internet now of uh, the bear going after the two little moose? No, I don't want to hear about moose. I don't want to hear about And the big... <laughs> and the moose chases him off. The moose wins. Yeah. Until the bigger bear came and ate everybody. All bears? And panda? Panda bears? It's so bear! A koala? Thank you. Thank you. So specifically, what do you, is it a, a grizzly? Yeah. Okay. There's nothing you can do. You can't climb through. What about a handful of black bear? Brown bear. Polar bears. 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 Polar I'm glad we cleared that out. <laughs> so there are a few types of cuddly bears. We also, we also have a cuddly bear. Okay. Bears. And leprechauns yeah. legit? Yeah, leprechauns okay. legit. Okay, so he, yeah, he is, uh, uh, he's a friend of bears. Um, I would say I have a pretty good fear of, uh, this is gonna sound weird because of, of where we are, of um, crowded places. <laughs> Uh, I was, just two days ago, I was, uh, I had to go get my, uh, kid's passport renewed. So I was sitting in the, the Travis County Clerk's office in Austin, and... I've been there. Uh, <laughs> Back to the JP's question. <laughs> <laughs> and it, uh, it, I have another fear. That's my head. <laughs> but, like... The, the, the place just started filling, it was like a DMV, it just starts filling up and there's so many people in there and I just I just kept staring at the door. And I don't know, it's it's legit. What about you? What's your fear of Bronco? Oh, uh, sharks? Ah, see, sharks, yes. <laughs> when you're in the ocean. Not so much if you're driving on the highway. But yeah. She's not driving on the highway or in the ocean right now. She's still scared of sharks. 
Yeah, but you're not in the woods, and you're still afraid of bears. A bear can be here. I'm sure there are a few of you. Huh? Okay. Oh. See, thank you so much. Stay away from sharks. I don't know. Could be. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Lovely. <laughs> Hello there. Hi. Hi. Hello there. So I know we're all really, really sad to see Supernatural is no longer on the air. But after playing characters that did the right thing, but were usually on the wrong side of the law, oh. how has it been playing new characters now that kind of have you put on the badge? Funny. I, I, that's a great question. I feel like Sam and Cordell, for me at least, the way I kind of approach them, they're both, thank you. They're, they're both humans, which means they are flawed. Uh, and they're trying to do the right thing as they understand it. And sometimes that manifests itself not perfectly, um, as far as looking the character. But by and large, they've acknowledged that they've made mistakes, they will make mistakes, but they're gonna try and do more good than bad. Um, I mean, I haven't gotten really into the, the bow of it all just yet, so I'm still waiting to kind of figure out what that what that looks like, um, but I will say that uh, for, for Dean, probably more for Dean than Sam, but he kind of, he, he did a lot of, uh, he did a lot of good the wrong way, uh, or he did the wrong things for the right reasons. Um, I like characters like that. I, I, like, I like the, you know, they, they, they may not do it legally, but they, they're doing it for the right reason kind of a thing. And I feel like if I can, if I can bring a little of that into this uh, this new character, which I think I think is is happening. You see that in just that one episode that I did. I was like, listen, we gotta have to bend some rules. Let's bend some rules. Um, and I like I like the idea of, of bending and breaking the rules for the right reasons. Um, so I'm a mental health therapist, and I work with children and family mostly. So I was wondering if I was to conduct a family therapy session with Sam and Dean, how would that go? <laughs> Let me tell you real quick, uh, Dean would be up and out of there in about 30 seconds. <laughs> like, I ain't talking about this stuff, but whatever. And I'd be like, I told you that. There's candy in the, uh, in the lobby. Can I, is that free for everybody? Can I get that? <laughs> and I think Sam would be like, I told you not to bring that up in front of Dean. Uh, I think, uh, you know what's funny? Uh, I think Sam and Dean uh, are, I think if you were, in a session with Sam independently, or Dean independently, you'd probably get a lot more done at first. There'd probably be a few of those before getting into past family traumas. Um, but I know they love the shit out of each other, so they'd want each other to, to get healthy and physically and mentally. Maybe we just found our idea for the reboot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not the, it's not the Sopranos, it's the Sopranos. <laughs> What is the, just a curious question, what, like, if you, if you were to, dealing with somebody like Dean who's probably not willing to share or not willing to open up, uh, at least in the offset, what are, what, do you just kind of have to just sit back and wait until that person comes around or are there tools of the trade that you can, that you utilize to, to make them want to share? Uh, a lot of the time, I go at the pace that the client wants to go at. So I've actually sat in session in complete silence with like defiant kids for like 45 minutes to an hour. Well, that's some good little hunting stuff right there. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. And then uh, one time at the very, very end, we started talking about fried chicken. And that's kind of how we like bridged the gap and, you know, broke the ice and stuff. But I waited for him. I think Dean would like that. Yeah, you could have probably brought up fried chicken at the beginning of that. He would have been all in. He would have, been, he would have had him like crying in 30 minutes over pie. So. Yeah. Thank you for your work. And thank you for your Yeah, thank you. I watched this new show on PBS recently called Road Food. I don't know if you've seen that. But, uh, I heard the host is, uh, was it didn't didn't really uh, didn't test well. 
my ratings kind of went when people want to scream. But I hear the food was good. Yeah. The food is good. Roads were great. The host is questionable. I don't know. I think the host is pretty hot myself. He's making some bow up. I saw the I saw the ads. I mean he's no guy for Yuri, but let's be honest. My question for you is if you could Awesome. If you wait till we're done giggling, you're gonna be here for a long yeah. time. Get in there, Jim. Let's hear it. Good point. Good point. Good point. So, if you could have any type of show, be it a travel show or any show, doesn't have to be on PBS, but any type of show that's about a, a passion of yours or something that you would love to just interview people about and explore, what what would that be about? I also love food. I think people know. Um, <laughs> And I, when I think during the pandemic, when we uh, had the six month break before finishing Filming Supernatural in 2020, I got into reading about, I think I like got a Life magazine or something about the most haunted places in America. I've always wanted to go around and see some. I'm fascinated by that. I think it's probably been done, so I don't want to be boring or just doing things that other people have already done, but I would love to go, uh, See some haunted places. And then walk away and be like, nothing happened. They knew it's Sam Winchester. Right? <laughs> uh, that's, I, I, there's a, a something that we've got in development right now. Um, that's funny that you say that because it's, it's along those lines. I, I, I keep meaning to share. I, I need to tell you about it because I think it'd be something fun to do. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't want to say too much about it because it might actually be something I can share with you guys. So, fingers crossed. Thanks, Jenna. My question is, you guys uh, both have new shows coming up, uh, and I was wondering what it was like. I know you just uh, finished up filming the pilot for the Winchesters. Uh, what's it been like working with you know new groups of people, new new locations in uh, New Orleans, and how that has been going? Uh, it's, I mean, it's. It's definitely different. I, I, I was uh, was talking earlier to um, to some folks about just the difference of, of walking onto the set Supernatural as opposed to some of these new sets, and and I, it's it'll never feel like that just because I, I doubt that he and I will be doing a show for 15 years, uh, and and it, not even if I mean, even if Walker lasts 15 years, what what we built. <laughs> What we built on that set with those people is is really, I think, incredibly unique and, and really just lightning in a bottle. And um, you know, I said walking onto that set is like walking into a warm hug every day. And uh, and I'll, I'll miss that, uh, and I miss that terribly. Walking onto these different of these new sets, it it is like walking into somebody else's house. And you know, it's, it could be fun and cool. Be like, oh wow, this is amazing. This is really cool. You guys have awesome sets, and you have a, a whole LED wall that you do your drive driving scenes in. And you, I mean, this is it's very cool. It's impressive. Um, there's a lot of different personalities that you have to navigate. There's new friendships to be made. So it is like starting at a new school, you know. Um, and I think he and I are, are, you know, we're old enough and we're savvy enough now and we've been around this industry long enough to know how to avoid the pitfalls um, and, and try to really um, focus on, on the, the positives. Um, but it is, uh, it is different than, you know, filming in Toronto or filming in uh, Albuquerque or filming in, in New Orleans. Like, they all have their different kind of vibe. And so it, it's, it is, it's like going to a different school. It's like kind of, kind of unique in that way. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, it is different, it's so cool. It's like you're going to know a new school and you love the new school. Or maybe it's a strange way to the analogy. Um, another thing that especially with Supernatural, you know, Jensen and I weren't, weren't producers in, in Maine. But to quote the bar, you know, a, a, a rose by any other name can smell sweet. Like we, we did a lot of, we, we were very involved with making sure to protect the characters, the canon, uh, the storyline, the sets, the, the blocking. Um, the, the tone on set. The tone that on was, set. That was a huge thing and that's something that really gets set from, I think, the lead actors. Uh, it, because it sets the tone for how the crew 
acts that relates to each other and the rest of the cast and stuff. So that's very important. It was also something he and I took very seriously and made sure that we always had a place that was fun and light and creative and inviting and welcoming. So yeah, and so with these sets, you know, both with the Winchesters and with uh, Walker Independence, we're not going to be there every day. Not even every week. We're going to be working our asses off on Zoom calls and on script notes and watching the <laughs> uh, So it's funny, you know, I saw three of the actors from Independence yesterday, uh, Kat McNamara, Matt Barr, and Justin Johnson Cortez, and it's kind of a, it's a funny feeling because I've seen them so, it's, it's maybe the feeling like y'all get seeing us, where it's like, you've seen us a whole bunch, we haven't seen y'all a whole lot, because I'm like, hey, Matt, Kat, Justin, what's going on? Like, What's going on, man? Because I, I live with them, you know, like, I, they're on my iPad, they're on my TV, I'm making notes, I'm giving notes to the editors and to the other producers, I'm Zoom calling to hire directors and this and that, and so, um, they don't see all the work, much like we didn't see all the work behind Supernatural that Cookie did, or Singer did, or, you know, Jeremy or Andrew or Sarah, and so on and so forth, um, but we're doing a lot of the work, we're just not able to be there for the in-person part of it, so it's it's going to be interesting. Um, and I've only ever produced one episode of television that I wasn't there for at all, which was the Independence pilot, because we were shooting Walker still, um, and with COVID regulations, I, I didn't have time to get there, and, you know, uh, quarantine for 24 hours and get back in quarantine 48 because we had to finish. Um, so we'll see. It's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. I'm really excited about it, but um, it'll be different. Thank you. Um, my question is, and it seems like Jensen is already on a roll, but best dad joke. <laughs> best dad joke? Uh, I just gave this one to my nine-year-old. Uh, I hope she does me proud. I said, uh, I said, you know, JJ, when you walk into a bathroom, you're an American. When you walk out of a bathroom, you're an American. But when you're in the bathroom, you're a pee. <laughs> I said this one much. shall see myself out. <laughs> Damn it. Stop. God. Why are you listening? I said this one. Um, on your way to the bathroom, you're Russian. In the bathroom, you're European. On your way out, you're Finnish. <laughs> That or I can roll a boat. Canoe? <laughs> a guy walks into a butcher shop and he goes to the butcher shop. Somebody tackle him. <laughs> <laughs> he orders a, he goes to the butcher and says, I, I, I'd like one steak and kidney pie. And the butcher kind of gives him a funny look and goes, I'm sorry, what, 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 what are you asking for? He says, uh, just a steak and kidney pie. The butcher goes, you just said, uh, steak and kidney. And the guy goes, no, I didn't leave. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. Help us. How many people, this is their first convention? How many is it now that you're last? That's... <laughs> well done. What's your best dad joke? Have you heard the one about the roof? Uh-uh. No, nah, it's over your head. <laughs> it's over your head. I don't get it. That one's going in the pocket. Thank you. I was just wondering, because I just watched The Boys, and wow, um, what, was, <laughs> what was, like, your most... He hadn't seen it yet. I made him watch it on the plane. <laughs> he just, he just, on my iPad, he just goes... <laughs> Sorry, so, uh, what, what was the question? Like, what was like the most shocking scene that you've ever seen, like in one of your new projects, or maybe like? <laughs> Have you seen the boys? <laughs> 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 I'm 
<laughs> First ten minutes with the boys yet? Yeah, I, that was jarring. Uh, I I was I had read that sequence over a year ago and was like, oh, that's interesting. Okay, I wonder, I wonder how that'll turn out. So blase. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's on brand. Um, and, and, but I was not there during that. I, I wasn't in that sequence, so I, I didn't see what they did or how they did it or anything like that. And I didn't hear anything really. Well, I, that's not true. I, I did. I did hear about some of it. Um, but you know, you don't know what the you don't know what the visual effects are really going to look like until they're done. And so, so when I watched that for the first time about a week and a half ago in Paris at the world premiere in a giant movie theater. <laughs> Yeah, basically, it was, it was disturbing, and at that size, too, was horrifying. If you guys have not seen it, then, then tread lightly. <laughs> Don't watch it offline. Yeah, you, should, other people. you can't unsee it. I'm just gonna warn you that they cannot put that toothpaste back in the tube. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was the no no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll go with that as well. I think I think I have strong agreement. Yeah, firm agreement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Freudian slip. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Apologies. Hi there. Hi, my name is Everest, and I used to work in an escape room, so that got me to thinking, seeing so many people with their different strategies and such. How would your characters fare in an escape room, and what other characters do you think would have done great in an escape room? Well, does it, does it count if they have magical powers? <laughs> no, they can't use their powers. It only has to be what, well, whatever you think your character would do, or whatever other character. That would have, that would have been a, a good episode. Dean would get incredibly frustrated very quickly, <laughs> and probably try to, like, <laughs> go, go through the drywall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not terribly dissimilar from what I would do. <laughs> I, was a uh, I think Sam would do well, but I think he would be so interested in figuring out the puzzle that he might take too long. Because he takes his time. He reads a lot, and he studies a lot, and goes back over it, and reads it a second time. So I'm sure he'd get the answer correct, and I just don't know if it'd be on time. <laughs> That's alright. Kind of like Jared. <laughs> Supernatural brought comfort to so many people on so many levels, and I know for a fact that you, your work on and off the set has saved lives. Oh yeah. So on that note, what is your favorite comfort food? Great question. You know, my favorite, th this is as cheesy as it sounds, it's queso. <laughs> You know, I knew you were going somewhere just the way you said cheesy, too. I was like, it's gonna be like queso. Yeah, you've watched me perform for like 35 years. How would you not know? As cheesy as it may sound. <laughs> this is something you guys may or may not know about Jared, but when Jared tells a joke that has a, a substantial uh, um, like build up to it, it is very difficult for him to get through it. Because he already, he's already laughing. That's Miles funny. before the punchline. It's funny. It's funny. <laughs> it's true, true. Uh, seriously, is you, okay, so is that your cheesy answer? <laughs> <laughs> It's actually, I, I, I'd rather, like, talk soup. I knew it. It's, 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 it's actually, I'm like, here we go. Buckle up. He's gonna go, he's gonna go for another one. It's, it's legit, it's soup. It's like chicken bill soup or, uh, uh, I got a question. Should, 
You got your chicken noodle soup. Yeah. Do you go saltines? If, if available. Or do you go oyster crackers? Oh. Oh. Saltines. Okay. Saltines. I don't think there's a wrong answer. Yeah. Yeah. There, yes, yeah, so, oh, really? <laughs> Just watch the first 10 minutes. <laughs> so I go saltines and some noodle soup. Yeah, that's not the answer. Uh, nope, it's not. It's liquid. <laughs> fried chicken. See? Yeah. The therapist earlier gives that fried chicken? Yeah, that's... Works. And that's largely because it's my wife's, and so whenever she's with me, I'm like, yes! The thing with fried chicken is it's super comforting until tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> then no one feels comforted. <laughs> this taco tastes funny. Uh, Turducken or whatever. Uh, what's your favorite comfort food? Sushi. Okay. Oh, very, very good. Very good. Thank you, Steve. I'm Lauren. I'm from New York. Um, this is my first convention. It was my graduation gift. So. Um, is, that a, is that a voucher? It is. Nice. <laughs> um, I actually have a question about the boys. Um, so I've been a fan since season one, big fan, and I was really excited when you got cast. Um, so I was just wondering if you had a favorite character on the show before you were cast, and if not, if you have a new one now. That's not Soldier Boy. Um, <laughs> I mean... Can you imagine me just goes, Soldier Boy? <laughs> um, uh, I mean, Butcher is so good. Yeah. So good. Uh, but he, he, I, he, I feel like, is the obvious choice, and, and you're not wrong. And, and I certainly, uh, I certainly love what Carl does with that character. It's insane. But I really like Frenchie. Yes. 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 And, and I will say that now knowing Tomer, uh, I, I, I like Frenchie even more. <laughs> he's, he is so good. Uh, he's not even French. He's Israeli. But he is so good. Um, and, and he's, yeah, and what he does with that character, he does so much when no one's looking, and when he doesn't need to be doing anything, he's always doing something. And I just find it, I, I just like that. From, a, from an actor's perspective, I just find that fascinating. So, yeah, but he's, and he's such a great character. He's, he has a good, he's a lot of good stuff this season, you're gonna like it. Yeah. Thank you. How many lines do you have to memorize in Latin? Do either of you speak fluent Latin? <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad language. <laughs> Who has to? Uh, I took Latin in high school, um, largely for SAT prep, um, to try and get into college, trying to get you know, a scholarship or something. Uh, so it was a little bit more, let's just say it wasn't complete Greek to me. <laughs> It was a work in progress. Is that a fart noise? <laughs> no, that was my hopes and dreams. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do not speak Latin. I probably still remember some of it. And imagine we could both rememorize it. He, yeah, he definitely, and they gave it, they gave him more of the, the heavy lifting in the Latin department. Uh, Which was also kind of by design of Jensen, because when they gave Dean the exorcitamus day on his fingers, he made it so, he just butchered it. A call order. Yeah. yeah. That's the same, it's the same, it's, it's like the same when I, when I mixed the, uh, the laundry load, and I put the wrong soap in, and I, I put the wrong thing. Yeah, I'm not doing that by mistake. He <laughs> um, plays the long game. He plays, <laughs> the, long plays game. the long game. Yeah, so uh, so he, he definitely got, got more of that Latin. Uh, but whenever I would have to do it, I would 
luckily I would have him right next to me and I'd be like, what is it? How is it? Say it again? Say it. I feel so, like there were a couple. I feel like there were a couple of scenes and a couple of episodes where we both could had Sam and or Dean doing it. And you're like, hey, you want to take Aladdin? I'm like, sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, they were like, and one of the guys says the incantation. It's like, I'm like, you got that big guy. Yeah, happy birthday. Uh, so, yeah.